I'm Ryan Anastasio, and you're watching Raving Ryan. Welcome to Raving Ryan. I'm here with Representative from the 30th District and House Major Majority Leader, Joe Arasimowitz. Representative, how are you? Good, Ryan. How are you? Um, can you tell us a little about yourself and how you ended up as the House Majority Leader? I, I can. I can. I, I got involved in politics in the uh, uh, late 90s uh, when I moved back to my town from the military. I started taking greater interest in what was going on in the town. So uh, I first ran for town council, stayed on town council for almost five years, and then I went on to be elected as the state rep in 2004. And then uh, my colleagues voted me the majority leader uh, two terms ago. Okay, so you started out by just serving in the town council. Mm -hmm. Then you were elected to, uh, for the representative in the 30th district. But now you, you, not, then you just represented about 40,000 people. Mm -hmm. Now you represent over 3 million. How hard was it to transition into representing just a small amount of people to the whole state? Uh, a lot more phone calls and a lot more emails. Um, it was difficult. I mean, you have to take more things into consideration. Things that may be very good for your town may not be very good for the state, so you have to try to find the balance. Okay, now we're going to transition to some state politic questions. Mm -hmm. Throughout this whole year, General Electric and med many other companies have threatened to leave the state unless the taxes are lowered. Jeff Immel, the CEO of G GE, said that he would like to move to a state with a, quote, more pro-business environment. What can the state do to keep GE and many other companies from leaving the state? So what I think we need to do is start having more conversations about exactly what they're looking for. I think taxes is a broad issue. Uh, someone like GE actually does fairly well in our current tax structure, but maybe there's other things we can do um, to work with the companies to ensure they have the resources they need. One of the things that concerns us a lot is what they call the uh, brain drain, which is our best and brightest college graduates are leaving the state of Connecticut and not coming back. So I think if we do a little bit more of working with companies like GE and others to ensure that those folks have a job when they come out of college, maybe we'll keep the best and brightest, and that would be a selling point for the state of Connecticut. And you think lowering taxes would help? Uh, so GE, for instance, really takes advantage of, uh, of a lot of the, t the tax breaks we offer to business, and I think they're great. We should offer some of the tax breaks to business. They provide jobs. Uh, GE's case, what is it, almost 4,500 jobs in that area. Um, so they do fairly well there. So I don't know that taxes is really the issue. I think uh, stability and rules that are set for many years to come. I think in the state of Connecticut, we react to our downturns and we change the rules really quickly and businesses aren't used to it and they can't adjust for it. Okay, this past summer, Connecticut abolished the death penalty for inmates on death's row. This was a huge story nationally. Did you agree with the de decision to abolish the death penalty? So death penalty was a funny one. When I was first elected in 2004, I was on the record of being um, in support of the death penalty. Um, we had the debate my freshman year. Uh, I sat in the chamber for almost eight hours listening to the entire debate. Had many conversations with my constituents about the issue, and ultimately I voted to abolish the death penalty. Um, I just don't feel necessarily it's our place to decide who should be living and dying. I don't have enough faith in the system. There's been too many cases that have been overturned. That, uh, that the convictions should stand no matter what. So I believe it should be life in prison without parole. Um, we can sit here and name almost all the inmates on death row, but we can't name the ones that are in prison with uh, life without the possibility of parole. I think it's unfair to the families if we're really never going to put these individuals to death, and we've only done one, and that's because he's, he wanted to be put to death. So I think it's a false promise, and I don't think it's fair for us to decide. Okay. In the state, Democrats control both the House and the Senate by large numbers. Mm -hmm. Also in Connecticut, the Democrats control all seven seats in Congress. But the Republicans le have the majority in the number of mayors and selectmen. Mm -hmm. Do you think the Republicans will ever catch up to you guys and control the Connecticut General Assembly again? I don't know. I, I, I think it's a possibility. Um, I, I'm not one to think any party has uh, the cornerstone on great ideas. Um, I pride myself on working very well with uh, Representative Claritas. Um, as the minority leader, and we work very well together and we come up with ideas. So I think it's up to the voters. If, if they think the ideas that the Republican Party are putting forward are better than ours and they win, then sure, I think they'll do a great job. Um, right now, I think the voters of the state of Connecticut have put their faith in us, and we, we need to do that. We need to lead and we need to govern the state. Yeah, I know Governor Malloy has had some clashes with Republicans in the past. Yeah. Um, do, do you think it's um, better to uh, uh, get along with the other party? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, when I was first elected to town council to, to this day, I think once you're elected, you no longer represent a political party. You should represent the voters as a whole, whether it's a district, whether it's a town council, or whether it's in my position as majority leader. I think we have to represent everybody in the state of Connecticut. And there's Republicans, Democrats, and unaffiliated. 
So there's no uh, initial after someone's name whether it's a good idea or not. In a poll done by the Hartford Current, it states that in 2014, 96,000 people moved out of Connecticut and just 82,000 moved in. Mm -hmm. That is a loss of just over 13,000 residents. If that rate keeps up in 50 years, we will lose a seat in Congress. What can you and your colleagues do to stop residents from moving out of the state? Well, I think we have to identify which residents it is. If it's, if it's seniors that are retiring, um, are they going for the climate change? Because we know Connecticut doesn't have the friendliness yeah. <laughs> of climate. Are they going for uh, states that are more beneficial to retirement pensions and doing uh, some sort of tax breaks on that? Or is it, which I talked about a little bit earlier with you, uh, the college graduates that are leaving in pursuit of better jobs? Um, I think finding out that exact data will show us which way we need to react. So I think if it's the young students leaving and not coming back because they're searching for a job, we have to do a better job to work with the companies to ensure that there's work for them. Um, if it's uh, pension um, benefits in other states as opposed to Connecticut, I think we should look at it, at least have a talk or a discussion about what we could do. If it's the climate, I don't know how much we can change there. Okay, gun control has been a huge issue for a long time now. Mm -hmm. This past month, Connecticut marked the three-year anniversary of the Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting. Mm -hmm. It... After the San Bernardino shooting, President Obama called for Congress to make people on terror watch lists not be able to buy guns. However, however Governor Malloy did not wait for Congress to react. Um, Governor Malloy put an executive order in Connecticut to make the President's intentions true. Do you think Governor Malloy made the right decision by doing this? I don't know if he could actually do it, and I'm actually having my attorneys look at that. I don't, I'm not sure that he can use an executive order to do what he did. Um, so that research is still out there. I mean, I understand why he would want to do it. You know, looking out for the safety of the residents of Connecticut is one of his main jobs. I just don't want to take away a right of an individual to bear arms. You know, how do folks end up on the terror watch list? Is there an appeal process? Is there a hearing? Or are they just placed there and not removed? I think we need a lot more information yeah, before you decide. Yeah, because they say there's no exact uh, data to, yeah. no exact information. So you could be an otherwise law-abiding citizen. Um, you could have or either have or be applying for a permit within the state of Connecticut. Somehow you've ended up on this terror watch list. You don't know that you're on there, and then you're denied. Uh, so what happens then? Is there an appeal process, a not appeal process? Is it for the terror watch list? Is it for the permit? I think there's a lot of information that needs to be gathered before we'd initiate anything like and that. And how do you think we can stop another um, shooting from happening again in the state or nationally? I don't know if we ever can. I think as long as uh, we have folks that uh, have the legal right to have weapons, which I agree in, agree with, and we have folks that uh, are have designs on hurting other people. I don't know if we'll ever stop it. I think uh, we, we can do our best to make sure we have security, especially in the schools, uh, state buildings, uh, private companies will take security measures that they deem are fit, but we live in a world now that there's risk, and uh, we, we just need to do the best that we can. Okay, the race for the White House has been very entertaining for most. Democrats started out with five candidates, but it has narrowed down for th to three. Is there any candidate out there, either Republican or Democrat, that you can see as doing a good job as the uh, President of the United States? I like Elizabeth Warren. Um, she's not going to run this time uh, from the Democratic side. Uh, I think the candidates we have are good candidates, and I'm sure they're going to have a healthy discussion on what, which directions this country needs to go. I think on the Republican side, there's a couple candidates I like also. Um, Donald Trump's not one of them. I don't think he'd be the best one to represent the, this country and be the president. But, you know, Marco Rubio seems like a very intelligent person. I think uh, a lot of his, his uh, ideas on how to move this country forward, I think, should be adopted regardless of who becomes president. And uh, uh, Jeb Bush, while, you know, I know there's a lot of talk about do we keep having to have Clintons and Bushes in the White yeah. House, um, I think some of Jeb Bush's ideas on how to move this country forward are good ideas, too. I know you coach high school football and must love the game. Do you, do you like watching um, NFL in college, and do you have any favorite teams? I do. Uh, yeah, I've been coaching now 18 years, both at the youth level and the high school level. I do love the game of football. Um, my pro team is uh, the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah. Interesting story about that, though. Uh, uh, number 31, Byron Jones, who was their number one draft pick this year, is one of my son's best friends growing up, and he actually interned for this office for two years. So I followed the Dallas Cowboys a little closer now than I even did before because Byron's there. Okay, Can Connecticut is much known for its pizza throughout the state. Do you have a favorite pizza place in the Nutmeg State? I do, I do. Uh, uh, Pepe's is obviously one yeah. of my favorites. I, lo I love their fresh tomato pizza in the summertime. But I have a local pizza place in Berlin called Bill's, and they make what they call a Big Mac pizza. So instead of sauce, it's Thousand Island. They put some hamburg, some pickles, some onions on there, and when it comes out of the oven, they throw a little lettuce on the top, and it tastes just like a Big Mac. So that's one of my favorites, too. 
Okay, since you work in government, you probably have to read a lot. Do you, do you like to read for pleasure, and do you have any favorite books? I do. I, I do read for pleasure. I, I'll read almost anything. Uh, one of the books that I'm picking up now is Game of Thrones. I've seen the, it on HBO, so yeah. I want to go back and read the book. Um, I read historical books all the time about travel. Um, I do psychology books, too. I think with coaching both uh, here, because I do kind of coach people here, and then back in the district, I think they're helpful to me. And do you have any favorite TV shows or movies? Uh, so I've just started watching Veep. I, I like Veep. It, yeah. It's pretty funny. Um, I like House of Cards. Uh, th those are the shows. So political I, shows? Political shows, but I like The Voice, too. Yeah. Um, I kind of lost interest in American Idol a while ago, but I still like The Voice. Okay, now for our last question. You've been in the House of Representatives for a while now. Mm -hmm. Have you ever thought about running for governor one day or even for U.S. Congress? I don't know about Congress. Um... I don't know. I really love the state of Connecticut. I love being here. Um, I have so many good friends. I have so many uh, close family members. I don't think I'd ever leave the state of Connecticut. But I wouldn't rule out governor, but who knows. Okay, I'd like to thank you for coming on the show today. And I'd, I'd like to thank my executive producer, Sam Hamill, couldn't be here today. Thank you for watching, and please subscribe. And thank you for watching. Please hit that red subscribe button. Also, I'd like to thank Liz Connolly for setting up this interview. I was like, Sam, that's right next to me. for What's up, guys? Other please things. subscribe. And good job please follow us on Facebook, Ryan Anastasio, and on Twitter, at Ryan one Thank you for watching, and have a good day. Subscribe.